Hi guys, if you're anything like me, you're probably interested to find out if these cheaper braids that you see advertised on the e-commerce sites such as Amazon, eBay, etc. are any good. Over the last year, I've got together a few of the cheaper braids and I decided to put them through a test. I'll show you the tests in the video, but I tested the line thickness using a vernier caliper. I tested the knot strength using the improved 10 turn uni nut supposedly the strongest knot that you can use for, for braid and I tested the true line strength I'll show you the, the rig that I made up to test the line strength so I'll show you how I tested the braids and then we'll go over the results for measuring the thickness of the braid I've got this digital vernier caliper just take the braid Touch the caliper, jaws of the caliper up against it two or three times along the length of the braid, twist it a little bit, try it again two or three times, and then just take the average of the readings that I get. That'll give me the thickness of the braid as measured in the real world, not just taken off the packaging that the manufacturer advertises. For every braid I've tested it the same. I'm tying it on to two heavy duty swivels. I'm using the improved uni nut or the improved clinch nut, you go through the eye of the swivel twice and then you come down and you do 10 wraps before moistening it and pulling the nut tight. That's one of the strongest braid nuts as tested by a, a YouTube channel called Salt Strong. I'll leave a uh, link to their video in the description below. They've got some really good testing apparatus for testing nuts and, and leaders and lines uh, and they've decided that this is the strongest nut they've tested so that's the one I'm using here. Uh, so I tied onto those two big heavy duty swivels and then tied onto some 200 pound braid. I can then put the braid over this steel pole. The other swivel can go through the eye of these luggage scales. These scales do read pretty accurately. I've took them down to the gym and lifted some of the plates down there and compared them to what the scales say and another set of scales. Uh, make sure they're on zero. Give it a little pull and yeah, it returns to zero, okay. Safety glasses on and then start to pull. Slowly, slowly increasing. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That broke it just shy of 15, we'll call it 15. And then have a look at the braid and see where it broke. Okay, it didn't break on that swivel. Let's have a look at the other swivel. Okay, yeah, the knot's still intact, it's broke actually on the line, but just as the line exits the knot, it, either, it normally will, will break just there as it exits the knot on the main line, or it will break on one of the loops that go through the, uh, the, the eye of the swivel. Those seem to be the weak points. I haven't actually had any of this 80 pound braid break midline. It's all breaking at the knot. And this is supposedly one of the strongest nuts. So if somebody tells you their nut is 100% strong, well, they've obviously never tested their braid. This one looks good. I'll test it. Um, I do this three times, record the results every time, and then take the average of the three tests. This is the nut that I used during the test. It's called the improved uni nut. You go through the eye of the swivel or the hook twice, Come up with the tag end to form a loop. Then wrap around the loop and the main line 10 times before moistening and pulling tight. There's a YouTube channel called Salt Strong. I'll leave a link to their video, their website in the video description of this video. They test a lot of different lines and nuts. And for braid, the improved uni nut, the 10 twist uni nut, twice through the eye of the swivel or the hook has been proven to be the strongest nut for braided lines. This is the rig I made up to test the line strength. I've taken a piece of PVC pipe here and wrapped it in green duct tape just to give the braid something to bite into so it doesn't slip. I then tie the braid onto the piece of pipe using the improved uni nut and wrap the braid around the pipe seven to eight times. Having the wraps of braid around the pipe means that when I pull the two pieces of pipe apart, most of the pressure will be put on the line and not the nut. So by this way, I'm able to test the line strength and not the knot strength. Once I've wrapped it around seven to eight times, I pass a U-bolt 
through the piece of pipe and put two nuts on the other side. That stops the pipe from rotating. I can then apply pressure and pull the two U-bolts apart by the steel shackles. This puts all the pressure on the line and I'll see the breakage on the line. This gives me the line strength of the braid that I'm testing. So after testing all the braids, I made a slide here for every one of the braids I tested. Each slide has a spreadsheet at the bottom that contains the useful information that was tested. On the top left of the chart, you'll see the name of the brand, the rated kilograms or pounds, and the manufacturer's recommendation for the thickness. Moving over to the next two columns, you'll see the rating in pounds and kilograms for that braid. Then the next column over, the green box, you'll see where the line test failed, where it failed in kilograms and pounds. In the next column, you'll see the results of the three knot pulls with the average at the bottom. Moving over to the next column, we have two percentages in yellow. The top one, in this case, is 39%. That's the percentage of where the knot failed compared to the line strength advertised by the manufacturer. And then underneath that, you'll see another percentage, in this example, 59%. This represents where the line failed as a percentage in comparison to what the manufacturer recommends the line is. And then finally over on the last column is the measured thickness, in this case 0.50 millimeters. We're starting off with the worst braid and working our way up to the best. The worst braid I tested was the Soge Liang braid. I've pronounced that wrong, I'm sorry. This braid is supposed to be a 97 pound or 44 kilogram 0.405 millimeter braid. The line strength failed at 26 kilograms or 57 pounds and the knot strength failed on an average of 17.6 kilograms. That gives me a knot strength of 39% and a line failure point of 59%. This is the worst of all the braids I tested and the measured line diameter is thicker than advertised. I measured it out at 0.5 millimeters. The next braid I tested was the Spectra Extreme. This braid is rated at 80 pounds and is advertised as having a thickness of 0.48 millimeters. In the line test, the line failed at 26 kilograms or 57 pounds. The knot failed on an average of 18.3 kilograms, giving us a 50% knot strength and a 71.25% line strength. The line did measure the thickness that the manufacturer recommended. I, I measured it out at 0.48 millimeters. For the C-Knight Monster W8, this came as quite a surprise because I've heard really good things about this braid. I brought the 80 pound braid, it's supposed to be 0.40 millimeters thick. The line test, it failed at 27 kilograms or 59 pounds. In the knot test, it failed at an average of 17.9 kilograms. This gives me a knot strength of 49.4% and a failed line strength of 73.8%. The thickness of the braid was correct, I measured it out at 0.40 millimeters, the same as what the manufacturer advertises. I was surprised to see that this braid didn't perform better after having some recommendations for this braid from other anglers, but this is why we do the test. Joff braid, one of the braids that you see come up all the time on places like Amazon, AliExpress. Advertised as an 80 pound braid with a thickness of 0.50 millimeters. It failed in the line pull at 32 kilograms or 70.5 pounds. The average knot failure was at 20.16 kilograms. That gave me a failed knot average of 55.5% and a failed line percent of 88.20%. Interestingly enough, when I measured the line diameter, it's actually under what the manufacturer shows. I measured it out at 0.40 millimeters, whereas the manufacturer recommended the 0.50 millimeters. Although this braid seems to have done quite well, I haven't used this braid because I'm concerned about the weave of the braid. If you hold the line, pinch it between your fingers, twist it back anti-clockwise, you'll see the weave open up. It's quite an open, loose weave on this braid. And for that reason, I haven't used it. The Angryfish Sinking Braid. There's only two sinking braids that I tested on this list. One is the Ryoko Sinking Braid, which I believe you can only get here in Thailand and the Angry Fish Braid, which you can order off the e-commerce websites. I wasn't able to get it in the 80 pounds, so this is 60 pound, supposedly measuring out at 0.40 millimeters. 60 pound would be a 27.2 kilogram braid. It actually failed at 25 kilograms or 55 pounds and had an average knot failure at 15.33 kilograms. This means it had a failed knot average at 56.36%, and the line failed at 91.7% of its line strength. I measured the line diameter of this 
at 0.51 millimeters. So a little bit thicker than the manufacturer says it is at 0.40 millimeters. The line does sink and it sinks really fast through the water. So if you're looking for a sinking braid, this one might not be a bad option. Casking Superpower. This is the casking that's a four weave braid. I tested the 80 pound, supposedly at 0.50 millimeters. In the line test, it failed at 29 kilos or 64 pounds. In the knot test, it failed at an average of 21.33 kilograms. That gives me a failed knot average of 58% and a failed line percentage at 79.9%. I measured out the line at 0.52 millimeters. The manufacturer said it was 0.50 millimeters. So it measured out just slightly thicker. So now we get to the last two and the best two braids that I tested. Interestingly enough, one of these is floating and one of these is sinking. This is the Cast King Mega 8. It's an eight weave braid. I tested the 80 pound strength, supposedly 0.50 millimeters thick. In the line test, it failed at 33 kilograms or 73 pounds. In the knot test, it failed at an average of 24.16 kilograms. That gave me a failure at the knot, an average of 66.55% and I failed on the line of 91.30%. For the measurement of the line, I got 0.50 millimeters, the same as what is advertised by the manufacturer. So the Cast King Mega 8 came in at number two, and at number one, the Ryoko Sink. I tested the 80 pound Ryoko Sink. The manufacturer says it would be 0.47 millimeters. In the line test, it failed at 35.5 kilograms or 78.2 pounds. For the knot test, it failed at an average of 24.7 kilograms. This gives me a failed knot percentage at 68% and a failed line percentage at 97.8%. For the measurement of the line, I got it correct to the manufacturer, 0.47 millimeters. I'm not sure you can buy this line outside of Thailand, but if you're in Thailand and you're looking for a good quality sinking line, this one looks like the line to beat. This obviously isn't the whole story when it comes to braid. There's personal preference. There's how well does the braid cast. I didn't measure the castability of the braid. I tried to answer that by measuring the thickness of the braid. Hopefully that will tell you some, something towards how it would cast. I didn't test the abrasion resistance of the braids, but in, in fairness, if you're concerned about abrasion resistance, you shouldn't be using braid. No braids have a good abrasion resistance. You should be using a mono uh, leader, shock leader. So I hope this information helps you. As always, please like and subscribe. See you soon.